Hey, Bio One students, uh, Mr. Yance again, and uh, we're going to finish up 2.1 notes today, and then we're going to start 2.2 probably tomorrow. But uh, let's go over some uh, bonding. You know, I left off with the last video talking about there's two major types of bonds. Now, understand these aren't the only types of bonds. If you take chemistry class next year, which a lot of you will, or maybe somebody will take ICP, um, there's more bonds than this. These are just the two main types that we're going to be dealing with in a biology type of setting. So, you know, I talked about that a lot, that that I mainly want to go over things in chemistry that affect biological systems. This is a biology class, so that's why we're going over some chemistry things that they do affect us. So the two main types of bonds are ionic and covalent. Ionic is what you need to remember, because I got a short answer on the test next week about this. So uh, what you need to remember is uh, I, ionic is transferring, covalent is sharing. So let me say that again, ionic transfers electrons and covalent shares them. So here's the thing, I talked a little bit about this in the previous video, but the problem is uh, a lot of um, bonding deals with these valence electrons. And these valence electrons are, as you can see down here on the picture, it's the outer orbit where these electrons circulate around the nucleus. So what we found is there's a maximum number of electrons those orbits can hold. Uh, we're going to do Bohr, we did Bohr models, and you guys worked with those, and you know what I'm talking about. So there's two in the first orbit, eight in the second, 18 in the third. So what happens sometimes is, why if we, you know, have like one lone electron, like right right here with the sodium uh, atom, and I need I need, you know, uh, a lot more. So it, it makes sense that I'm going to get rid of that one lone electron because I can put 17 in there. So it's a lot easier to get rid of one than try to find 17, right? So they're like, I'm just going to get rid of this. Chlorine has the opposite problem. They just need one more. And they're like, hey, uh, we're just needing one. So it makes sense that I will accept one easier than uh, trying to get rid of seven or whatever. Okay. So that's pretty much how this works is uh, what is those valence electron shells? How many do I need? Do I just need one? Do I need to get rid of one? Think of ionic bonding. I like to use a football example. It's sort of like you got a quarterback with the ball. He's got a big lineman after him, so he chucks it down the field to receiver. He gets rid of the, the football. The receiver catches it, and, and that's pretty much what we're doing here. One atom's going to get rid of it. Another one's going to catch it, and uh, what that does, though, and here's the complicated thing with ionic bonds, is it creates something that we call an ion, not to be confused with isotopes. Ions are charged atoms, positively or negatively. So, for example, you can see here with sodium, since it gets rid of that electron, it drops the number from 11 electrons to 10 over here. So now I got an extra proton, 11 protons, 10 electrons. So now instead of being balanced, it has a positive charge. Chloride, chlorine, which becomes chloride when it combines, it actually will gain an electron, so it has an extra one, so it has a negative charge. So that's what those charges mean. Am I gaining or losing electrons? And that's why when you see sodium chloride written, it has an Na plus and Cl negative, that shows you that there's a positive and negative charge. And this is the other thing that's kind of crazy with the ionic bonds is they will then change the behavior of what those elements are by themselves. So by themselves, sodium is a metal. Uh, hang on a second. I have a phone call coming in. Okay, sorry about that, guys, but uh, typical school stuff. So uh, so that's what we basically are doing. We're either adding or, or, or uh, gaining or adding or, or losing electrons. So we're going to get charges on them. So if you look at this next slide, uh, so this ionic bond, as I go back to what I was saying before, you know, uh, sodium is – on the periodic tables, a metal chlorine is a um, actually poisonous gas. You got two in elements that by themselves have one characteristic. You put them together, you get this little white crystal called salt that we put on food every day. So compounds are going to have different characteristics than their elements that they're made out of. So that's kind of interesting. So just so that you know that, and you've probably been taught that before. So we have this NaCl now. Now it does have a slight charge on it. So uh, since sodium easily loses an atom, it's going to be a positive one or loses a, a electron. It's going to become a positive ion. 
chlorine is going to easily gain one, it becomes a negative, and you can see the numbers there on the, on the screen. So pretty simple. Don't make it more complicated than that. It's this where I got an atom that wants to get rid of an electron. Now it's balanced and stable, and one that needs one, and, and that's where ionic bonds form. And understand that's how elements work on the periodic table, that you know, you can't just put any two elements you want together. There has to be a valence electron uh, situation. That's what determines who's going to combine with who and why we have some compounds in our world and other compounds we don't have because it's just a matter of what kind of uh, valence electron situation do we have in those atoms, okay? Now, that's transferring. Covalent bonding is a lot different because with that one, we're sharing electrons, okay? So here's the deal you know, these things are moving, these electrons. So let's say I have oxygen, good example. And um, oxygen is got six electrons in its outer shell. It needs two more. So hydrogen is like, okay, since you got six, I need one. So what I'll do is I'll share my one with you because hydrogen has one uh, electron. And oxygen says, okay, I'll share mine with you. And by doing that with two different hydrogens, then both are happy and you get H2O and you get water. So what we found with covalent bonds is if I share two electrons, like the example I just uh, explained, I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. That's called a single bond. If I share four electrons, that's a double bond. And if I share six electrons, that forms a triple bond. Now, here is the biology part of things. So think about this. You know, I talked about uh, fats in my class yesterday and, and, you know, some fats just aren't good for you. Saturated, unsaturated, you probably have heard those commercials and seen labels and stuff like that. So with those, uh, if I if I have triple bonds, if I have like a deep fried Twinkie and I eat it, it's bad for me because I don't break those triple bonds down very easily and, the, and they accumulate and, and we have clogged arteries and things like that. Whereas single bonds like carbohydrates and things like that, we break them really fast and we get quick energy out of them and they don't accumulate in the body. So that's the biology part of this covalent thing is, you know, what, what significance does that have in the realm of biology, right? There's a good example. So with covalent bonds, uh, we form what we call a molecule. And uh, that's, there's a diagram. There's my two hydrogens. They're sharing their one electron. Oxygen sharing theirs, both sides. If you add them up, two, four, six, eight, oxygen has the maximum number it needs. Hydrogen only has one. It only needs two for its shell so that they're happy. Both are happy. Both uh, uh, have their needs met. They're stable now. And that's why we have water, which is the most versatile substance in the world, basically. And that's what notes are, are going to be about next section or next session is those. Okay. So basically, uh, when atoms of the same element join together, they also can form a molecule. So it doesn't have to be different elements. I can have oxygen combined with another oxygen. They can share electrons and we get something called O2 that we breathe in every day, right? Uh, you, you might see, uh, um, you know, other elements like that, like H2, hydrogen gas. That's two hydrogens combining with each other because they're sharing electrons with each other and they get two. So that's the thing with covalent bonds is you don't have to have different substances. They can be the same substance and you get the same results. I, I use this analogy and this is what I'll close with today. It's sort of like in my GPS the other day, I was going to some place and I put it in and it told me, there's three different routes, okay? So the starting point and the end point's the same, but I got three different ways I can go to get to that, that destination. That's how these bonds work. You know, we're, we're, all we're doing, the end goal is to get the maximum number of electrons in my outer valence electron shell. I can do that by combining with other elements or my, by combining with the same element. It, different paths, same result, okay? So that pretty much wraps up 2.1 notes uh, 2.2, we'll, we'll jump in on tomorrow and uh, we'll uh, continue on. So just keep putting these in your packet. Keep looking these notes over. We're going to have a test next week. So uh, I'll let you know when that is. Uh, we're going to do a little lab coming up here. So it'll be a little bit yet. So, okay. So have a good day. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. See you. Bye.